Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. It is Wednesday, so it is Wisdom Wednesday. I'm telling you, we got Diane Castle already saying hello. She knows the drill. If you're coming in live, number one, Juan is saying good morning. Mindy's saying good morning. Um, and I know there's some other people out there who's watching because they tell me that they watch, but they're, you know, they're still percolating, as, as Pastor Paul says, you know, so, you know, Hello, hello. We're so excited. We are so excited. And if you're coming in on the replay, hashtag replay, and I promise you, you know, Ann Lewis, good morning, good morning. I love seeing Ann because she comes in on Periscope. So we're we're playing around with our lives. It, it, and I think Periscope, we don't have any problems. But if you've noticed, we're kind of having a little bit of uh, internet issues here and there. So that's why Pastor Paul's kind of jumps out, comes back in. We're going to get it figured out. But man, we are so excited. We've got some great guests lined up starting next tomorrow, our next, our next episode where we're going to be having couples and individuals coming in and talking about their marriages. So, you know, like always, we're going to start with the word of prayer. So make sure however you do, the wake up in the word, whether you're doing it when you're still in your bed, whether you're doing it and you're doing chores, whether you, however it is you're doing it, we're going to do it. Or if you are taking notes, I'm telling you, I take notes every day. So when you see me, if I'm not praying, because, you know, if I pray, my head is down. But if you see me with my head down, I'm taking notes. Sometimes I go back and I, I watch the episodes because there's stuff that it was so great that I didn't get to really absorb. And so I'll, I'll rewatch it and it cracks me up because I'm like head down, head down. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Um, but I'm taking notes over here because my life has changed since we've started doing this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm taking my growth and development seriously because I know that, that I've been commanded to grow. I know that until I'm loving everybody, even when they're not kind to me. I still got work to do. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes somebody does something and I don't like it. <laughs> so that means I still got, I still have some growing to do so I can be the best disciple of Christ that I can because my intent is always to be kind. My intent is always to be helpful. My intent is always to do the right thing. That's my intent. But, you know, that doesn't always happen. And so um, until everybody feels that pure love of Christ, um, it's important. So we're going to start with the word of prayer and then I'm going to answer Mark's question. And we're going to jump right on back into um, to our, our conversation with marriage and how we can make our marriages better, whether whatever our situation is, you know, whether we got a spouse with us right now or not. So let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for this day. We are so grateful for this community of believers. Father, we are grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, who has shed blood for us, that if we will repent of our sins and forsake them and make any restitution that needs to be made, Father, we will be held spotless before thee at that great and and that great judgment day, Father, we know that we will be, we will have to make an account for the decisions and choices that we made that we didn't repent of. So we know, Father, that there's no reason for that because Jesus has, has died on the cross for our sins. Father, we know that marriage is ordained of you and we know that it is an institution that if we do it right, will bring us so much comfort and so much joy and happiness and peace. It will make us stronger because we know, Father, that that together that we can help one another and regardless of the situation, Father, because we know some, some of our community of, of believers and some of your children aren't married yet. Uh, maybe they've never been married. Maybe they need to prepare themselves because the, the person that you want them to have they're not ready for yet. Uh, maybe, Father, that we've got people that have um, had their spouses um, pass on and they're in a place where potentially they want to prepare for uh, someone else in their lives or just stay as a greatest spouse now 
so that they can be reunited at the right time. Father, whatever our situations are, we pray that pride will be stripped away from our hearts and from our lives. We pray that humility will abound where we are. We pray, Father, that we'll work through the individual situations that we have so that collectively we can be better. We're so grateful, Father, for all of our blessings. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Uh, okay, Mark, my name, Jims, is actually the French word for people. So, Le Jean means people in French. My dad was a tennis pro and he was actually playing in a tennis, a tennis tournament in Ponca City, Oklahoma, way back in the day. And the hotel was named the Jens Marie Hotel. And it, the owner's name was Jens. It's a, it's a male Scandinavian name as well. And um, the wife, so the husband was Jens, the wife was Marie. They named it the Jens Marie Hotel. And that's where I got my name from. So thank you so much for asking. Um, all right, Pastor Paul, let's jump right on into it. Oh, he's there. We go. All righty, all righty. Can y'all hear me? Can you see me? Can you? Am I here? No, okay, here. awesome, awesome. Uh, great question, Mark. Good, great question, Mark. I always, I always wondered that too, and I'm like, hmm, maybe it's Genevieve, maybe it's something else. But that's awesome. That is, that's, that's totally who you are. People, you're a people person. You're named people. So that's, that's really cool. Um. So we're going to have a call to action today, even though there's a little bit of glitch on my end, as long as you can hear me, that's all that matters, right? So we're going to have a, a call to action today on the show, and we are going to, I even created the, the banner, and I want you to ask yourself this question today, and then I want you to write it down in your journals as well. What do I need to confront about myself in my marriage? Because lately in the last few weeks, we've been we've been really looking at ourselves because I believe that's that so many times, you know, we get caught up in this this statement called self-care. Right. But in that self, we have to look at ourself and say, how can I improve not to just improve myself, but how can I improve so that I am able to bless my marriage. I'm able to bless my kids. I'm able to be a better person in my business, in my job, in my coaching, in my mentoring, in all of those areas of our life. So I want you to write that down in your journals. Those who are my, my journal takers and, and note takers, what do I need to confront about myself in my marriage? And one of the things that I learned yesterday on my coaching call with my coach was this. Through this season of it's a little bit frustrating, you know, selling a house and, you know, leaving the house for people to come in and look at your house. And we have open house this weekend and just all this stuff going on. Um, it, it's it's a little bit frustrating. And so one of the things that he pointed out to me yesterday was just be present, be present in everything that you do. A hundred percent present, whether you're working on some creative stuff, whether you're creating flyers, whether you're creating more stuff for your business, you're doing more video editing, audio editing, talking with people, just be present, he said, because that's one of the gifts that God has given you is to be present, to listen to people, to really dive into conversations with people, he said, but also dive into that present place in your home and in your marriage. And so for me, I'm like, wow. And so that's what's been in my spirit the whole day yesterday, even throughout the night. Every time I would wake up, I would just hear, be present, be present, be present. And so one of those things comes back to the scripture that we uh, brought out yesterday and the day before, Ephesians 4, 2 and 3, with all humility and gentleness. After the show yesterday, me and Jens were talking and you know, she was like, you know what? We really need to focus on humility and healing. And so we titled today's broadcast, Humility Heals. So with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of what? Peace, not contention, not strife, but the bond of peace. And so when you look at the word humility, there's there's some notes that I was, I was taking this morning. So forgive me as I'm shuffling around, but one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves every day, what is it to be humble? 
What really truly is it to be humble? And two of the points that I wrote down for myself, this is for me, accepting the facts that are before me. Because there's facts about myself that I don't like. There's facts about my marriage that I don't like. There's facts about my wife that I don't like. There's facts about selling this house that I don't like. However, accepting those facts that are before me, right? Because I'm looking at me right now. It's my humility that has to come forth. Number two, and allowing your uh, and allowing my great need to move me towards Jesus. So that need in that thing that I'm accepting, the fact that I'm accepting, there's a need there to either remove it, to enhance it, to magnify it, to make it better, whatever that looks like, allowing that great need to move me closer to Jesus Christ. And so that's what I have on humility. I'm going to let Jen's jump in because this is something that a marriage, we have to have in a marriage. We have to have the humility. We have to have the gentleness, the patience, the bearing with one another in love. That's one of the hardest ones. So I'm going to let Jen's jump on in because, you know, we're both married in, in two different homes, but I think, you know, every single one of us deal with the same things in our marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I love the banner because it really, you know, I took a picture of it. And I don't know about y'all, but I think that's something that I need to look at. <laughs> and, you know, I like it, the red, the white, you know, it's popping right at you. But, you know, when, it, when you look at that scripture alone and we say, OK, with all humility and gentleness. So how are we supposed to operate with one another? Because in this first Corinthians seven, three, it says the husband must fulfill his duty to his wife and likewise also the wife to her husband. So we know marriage is ordained of God. We know that there, we have a responsibility to one another. And how is it that we're supposed to operate with one another with all humility? And, you know, we always have to look at ourselves first. I mean, it's so much easier and we all can agree. <laughs> it's so much easier to look at the other person and all the things that they're not doing right. You know, I mean, it is easy. Uh, but, you know, what the Lord is saying to us is, you know, obviously when you start and I can't wait to I cannot wait to hear from Mark Latham, because when you start treating one another with all humility and and you accept the facts that are before you instead of resisting them you know and you are and you're it you're going back and forth with one another in gentleness with patience you know i mean listen you know gentleness is a nice voice and i'm going to tell you that i don't always use this really nice sweet little voice you know, sometimes I, you know, because that that was honestly the first thing, you know, I, the question and the challenge Pastor Paul put out, what do I need to confront in my about myself in my marriage? Well, let me tell you, when I when we first started doing the broadcast in June and we really started talking about, OK, what power are you giving Satan? Because Satan doesn't have the authority to come in and take anything from you. You have to give it to him. And um, and I was like, well, you know, there is some strife and contention in, in, in my marriage going on. And they're not everything's going great. So I know that I'm doing something wrong. And I examined myself. And, and of course, anger. I mean, that was really something that I've been working on. And what's amazing is, is when you do confront those things and then you start to pray about those things for, for God to help you release that power that you've been given to Satan. Um, you know, that, that, although that, that has definitely improved myself, but it's definitely 100% improved our marriage because I have been talking with more gentleness 
You know, it also in Ephesians 4, 2 through 3, it says, you know, um, interact with patience. And, you know, that's another thing that, you know, I'm not always the most patient person in the world. Uh, <laughs> I like to be action. Go, go, go. You know, I want action. I want action, you know. And um, so as you're looking at, you know, what do I need to confront about myself? in my marriage. And let me tell you what, I've got this amazing physician that's going to come on the show as a guest and really talk about how we can identify the soul wounds that we have from our childhood and how together as husband and wife, you can help heal those wounds. And if you don't have a spouse, how you can help heal wounds with another believer, you know, someone else in our community of believers, somebody that you know, and you, and you trust, because let me tell you what, when you are healed, you are able to be more equally yoked with your spouse. And let me tell you what, you know, don't get it twisted. We're all, we are all uh, wounded. Uh, we're all wounded soldiers. Um, but it is through the blood of Christ that we can be healed and we can help heal one another. So with all humility and humility means to accept and accept means to not resist. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to accept certain facts about yourself because in your mind, that's just not who you, that's not how you see yourself. And I, I want to remind everybody that, listen, we, but just because, you know, let's say, you know, let's say you are quick to anger. You know, I, I'm just going to use myself like Pastor Paul just did. Let's say you are quick to anger. I mean, you know that about yourself, but you don't like it, you know, and because you don't like it, and you, in your mind, you had a, a certain view of yourself. And then you realize, but that, I don't like that view. I don't want that associated to me. What you got to realize is that's not who you are. You know, you, you are not an angry person. You are not a bad person. You are not a mean person. You are not a selfish person. Just because you have given that power to, you know, maybe it's pride, you know, but just because you've given that power, maybe it's an offense, um, you know, maybe it's perfection, you want to be perfect. That's not who you are. I mean, you were not born that way. You know, you were born this amazing, just cuddly, cute, adorable, precious, you know, child of God. Um, because you've given some power over to Satan into your life to mold you in a certain way that potentially is a stronghold in your life. That's not your identity. All right. That's something that you need to, you know, get the scissors, cut those strings. So Satan doesn't have that a part of you. So if you kind of, if you start to learn, you are a child of God, that's your identity. And all of these fruits of the spirit, and all these amazing things, that's who you are, but you've allowed Satan power. You know, sometimes that can help you accept and not resist what you need to work on because we all need to work on stuff. Um, and so then it says bearing with one another in love. And, you know, eager when I, when I think of bearing one another in love, you know, look, how do you want to be treated? I mean, that's what it says in the scriptures, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. And let me tell you what, that means give grace because there's plenty of times that I've done something and mm, 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 I mean, I just think I would, if I did that to somebody else, what they're doing to me, you know what? I would want them to give me grace because I know that's not the intent of my heart. You know, sometimes we do things and we say things we don't mean, but we're bad. Um, we don't mean, but we did it. 
you know, we don't mean, it's just like I was sharing on Monday how, you know, my husband and I, we were, we were having some contention over something because he said something I didn't like. And then when we separated, because that's our new tactic and it's working well, you know, once it gets a little bit, you know, you know how it starts to bubble, you know, you know, when everything is fine and then somebody says something is like, oh, you know, you can start feeling you're bubbling. And then, you know, you, you kind of say some words and then we said, OK, hey, separate. And let's go. Let's go pray individually. And it was when I was praying that God put on my heart. He didn't even mean that. I mean, he loves you more than what he's saying. Now, that that just immediately diffused me how I was feeling, you know, so we got to realize, and I'm, I'm literally, I'm going to keep this picture of pastor Paul up with the banner. Y'all see it. I'm going to, that I took, I'm going to keep this and I'm going to look at it because then it says eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go one step further before I heal, hand it back over to Pastor Paul because humility heals, right? Um, and I'm going to say that as we're going through this process, that we also do a self evaluation of are there things in our relationship, in our marriage, um, that we need to apologize for and ask for forgiveness. You know, um, it seems a lot of times in marriages that you just, you get through something, but maybe you're not really healed. You know, maybe you get past an argument, maybe you get past something. And remember, this isn't looking, what do they need? to come and apologize to you for it. No, no, no. That's not what this is. This is, let me think, is there something I feel I need to make right? Is there something I feel I need to apologize for? It's not, you're going to go to the your spouse and say, um, are you ready to apologize <laughs> to me yet about X, Y, Z? No, we're not doing that. You know, that's just going to make more contention. I'll tell you that right now. Um, look at yourself in a very uh, real, kind, loving way. Treat yourself with all humility and gentleness. Treat yourself with patience. Don't beat yourself up, okay? Treat yourself with love. Treat yourself eagerly to maintain unity in the spirit of bond and peace. You know, treat yourself that same way. And as we go through this month and beyond, if there are things that you feel you need to make right, humility heals. And there will be nothing more powerful, I can promise you, than going and saying, you know, I, I really been thinking about this and that was wrong for me to do or say or act or whatever. Um, and it will heal. So, Pastor Paul, take it away. You know, you're saying uh, <clears throat> something that I've been saying for years to just people in general. Everything that you're talking about is really, truly a 12 step program. And when people hear 12 step program, they're like, well, I'm not an addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not from the ghetto. I'm not from the streets. I'm, I'm not homeless. You know, I'm not this de degenerate. But the truth is this. Everyone needs recovery in some area, shape or form in their life, whether it's waking up <clears throat> every morning, going through your checklist of, of those 12 steps, understanding that I am the problem, understanding that I'm, I am handing over all of this to God, understanding that I do need to take inventory. But what you're saying is really making amends with people. That's where the healing really truly starts, starts to, to show after step six, seven and eight, making amends with those people that you've wronged. And it's the same in the marriage. And so you're talking about humility heals. What I looked up earlier this morning was, you know, one of the things that, that, like I said, humility does is it, is it seeks help for, for the need. Pride hides. 
Pride will say, I have it all together. Pride will say, I don't need no one to, to help me. Or either, or even no one will understand my situation. So what happens is pride begins to build these walls. Pride begins to build these things brick by brick, relationship by relationship, friendship, word, all of that thing, all of that stuff that goes on. Pride will quarantine. It will cause you to isolate and it will leave you for dead spiritually. That's what pride does. That's why the Bible says pride, pride, become, pride comes before a fall. There is, there is no way, shape, or form that, that any one of us can say, well, no, pride's not going to make me fall. Pride will make you fall, period, because you get so caught up in self that it's not, it's not healthy for you. When we're prideful, we find ways to interact with people, and then we go back and suffer in all of our junk. And that's where God wants to heal. That's where God wants to replace those things. God wants to replace all of that. Jesus himself says it this way. Um, John 8 and verse 12. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. This is a statement right after he talked with the girl that was caught in the sin and said, where are your accusers? And she said, there's nowhere to be found. He said that neither do I condemn you. Then he goes furthermore to say, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. But he also let the woman know, listen, do not come back to what you've been doing, lest a greater thing comes upon you. Now that you've recognized now that you understand that what you were doing was a sin, I forgive you. However, if you go back to your vomit, that's on you, baby girl. That's basically what Jesus was telling her. And so when we go back to the scripture, Ephesians 4, 2, and 3, while you were, while you were reading it earlier and I was looking at it, if we're talking about self, here's, here's, here's what I, I want every one of us to do. When you read this scripture, I want you to ask the question before you say the scripture. Am I humble and gentle? Am I patient? <laughs> Am I bearing with my spouse, my friendships, my job, my relationships in love? Am I eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace? Am I? doing this so that I can uh, produce fruit in my life and the life of those that are around me. You see, we get caught up so many times, Jens, that, well, I'm just doing this life for myself. I've got to better my life for myself. And we have this self-worth issue that we don't think that what we're doing is worthy enough for other people to follow. But that is furthest from the truth because Christ himself said, you know, love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. He doesn't say love your neighbor and forsake yourself. He doesn't say love your neighbor and beat yourself up. He doesn't say love your neighbor and just humiliate yourself. No, he says love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because if God loves us, he expects us to love him, but we can't love him when we don't love ourselves. So there is those moments in those seasons of looking at self saying, you know what? I am a child of God. I do know my identity. I am a good person. Now, when we replace that with arrogance, then there's a problem. But when we replace that and decree a thing, see, that's where so many times in prayer and in conversation, we lack as Christians. We have to understand that we have the power to declare and decree a thing over our lives. Why? Because of the identity of who we are. We are the righteousness of Christ. It's what the Bible says. We are righteous. We are righteous. 
We are saints of the most high king. We are the children of the most high king. His DNA runs through us. He breathed life into us from the beginning. And so when we come back to that place of knowing our identity, the problem is when we're not humble, when we're not gentle, when we're not patient, when we're not bearing with one another, when we're not eager to to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, we don't know who we are. We're trying to function. <clears throat> curses come in so many different ways. Curses come through the blood, generational. Curses come from looking and watching somebody do something, thinking that's the way to do it. Curses come from things that are being spoken over us as a child, as an adult. And, and curses also come with us speaking death over ourselves. So we think that witchcraft <laughs> is this witch cooking this, this soup and doing these spells, witchcraft is anything that is going to manipulate the word of God, anything that is going to get away from the word of God, anything that is going to manipulate your mind. It's a mind altering drug. It's a mind altering word. That is where witchcraft comes in because it's not lined up with God. So all those evil things that we think about, that, that stuff shouldn't even touch us. We ought to be more afraid of the words that we speak. I see, I watched this, this meme or, or, or read this meme uh, throughout the last years. It's, it's been popping up all over Facebook. If the words that I speak are tattooed on my body, what words would I change? If every word that I spoke showed up on my body, towards myself and towards other, how beautiful would I still look at myself? Now, I'm not saying look at yourself and just beat yourself up. No, but what, but what we're both saying is come to the place where you confront and you say, okay, why is the same situation happening over and over? Why does it continue to come? Well, it's those people. No, if you, st if you continue to see a problem come into play in your life, you are probably part of the problem. Amen. So Jane, uh, Mark put up here, Jane 3, 8, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. This is what the believer must realize. No one has a storybook marriage and we have to work on it daily. That's what I'm talking about because it is a daily, daily walk. It's a daily recognition. It's a daily application. It's daily. And so I will stress it until I die. That's why I call my program Life Recovery. I am your life recovery coach because life itself will beat you up that you don't need a drug because sometimes your drug is sex. Sometimes your drug is abuse me mentally. Please abuse me mentally. Your drug sometimes is, is, is spiritually beat me up. It's all manipulate me. That's your drug. And until you figure that part out, that's when the curses begin to break. So I know we're running late. So gents, close us yeah. out. This has been awesome. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, one thing to close, I love it all, everything that you were sharing, you know, taking it and realizing as we're doing this individual self evaluation and self work, um, realizing that, you know, humility and love are, are combined and intertwined. And pride is really intertwined with, with um, low self worth. You know, it, it's when people, so you got to realize that, um, you know, all these are flags to let us know where we are in our journey. But when we can strengthen our marriages, we can help one another strengthen other areas within ourselves. Um, and it's going to take, like, like Mark says, it's daily. So we know this is daily. This is a daily effort that must be done. So I love it. I'm going to let you pray us out, Pastor Paul. And let me tell you, we're going to have Amy Roberts with us tomorrow. And, you know, cross your fingers that her husband's going to get on with her. But if not, you know, we'll continue the conversation of marriage. And 
really with ourselves and then we'll start getting into some other um, other topics regarding marriage as well so pastor paul go ahead and pray us out awesome awesome and, and remember guys what do i need to confront about myself in my marriage all right write that down look at it whatever you got to do so father we just thank you lord for this awesome day Father, I thank you for this broadcast. I thank you for this partnership with Jen and I. I thank you for her marriage. I thank you for her authenticity and her vulnerability, uh, talking about the issues that she has had and talking about herself and how she needs to change. And so, Father, I just pray that over every single one of us that are in this room, that are in this broadcast, that are watching live or watching the replay. Father, we know that this broadcast is a place of healing that you are healing people, hearing your word, knowing that Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus is the light of life, that we have the light that he has given us. And so, Father, we take that torch today. And Father, I speak to that spirit right now that has no self-worth, that doesn't think that they can overcome. Father, we bind and we break that curse right now in the name of Jesus. We, we, command Satan away from these people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we plead the blood of Jesus from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, no matter where they're at, God, as they surrender to you, as they lift their hands to you, God, in every insecurity, every worth issue, everything that would hinder them from receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, right now, as they surrender, I pray that your angels would be ministering to them, that your blood would continue to saturate them, that your blood will continue to flow through them, and that you would bring them peace. You would bring them humility. You would bring them patience. You would bring them those things that they need in order to be able to overcome all obstacles in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, your word says that we're where there are two or more are gathered that you are in the midst and whatever we ask in your name, that is your will shall be done. And I know that your will is to heal the land and heal the people. And so father, we decree and we, we declare a thing right now, restoration. We decree power. We decree peace. We decree total restoration of families and that curses may be broken in the name of Jesus. And so father, right now we just release that power. We release your blessing. We release your presence into this atmosphere right now. And we give you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And amen. 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 All righty. Well, listen, we'll see you here tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. Central or watch it on the replay uh, and let us know what you think and how we can help more. Till we meet again, everybody, be big, be bold, and most importantly, be you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.